choose to stand Go on, give yourself a chance Rush away like an avalanche Look down on the lonely flame A few steps till the view has changed Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to be reviewing the Be Perfect Cosmetics with LMD palette. and um, This is the master palette it's called. Um, this has been absolutely blowing up um, in Northern Ireland and I think they've already sold out once. It's, it's in Chemist now, I don't know if it's sold out completely but it'll be back on the website in November time. This palette is not mine, it is my sister's and I will explain um, later on the video why I don't have the palette myself um, and why I probably am not in as big a rush to get it as, a lot of, as some other people happen to be. Um, so I am going to review it, I'm also going to give this, um, I can't even remember what it's called, this little like concealing and highlighting pen I go and I will let you all know what I think of them as I go. So before I start the actual review section, I wanted to talk about the packaging and swatch all the colours on the inside. So the packaging on the outside is a little bit dirty for a start, but it is plain black and then it has this nice like holographic design for all the like holographic detailing on it, which is very nice, you know, it's like very, um, it's quite simple but it's effective um, and I don't know if you'll be able to see in the camera the way it's sort of like changes colour the way it shifts. So on the back it says high pigment palette used as blush, highlight, sculpt and eyeshadow. Um, and it has all the ingredients, it's good for 24 months and the net weight is 30 grams. Now the one thing I will say already that I noticed about the palette is I don't know if you can see the colours on the background but this looks green, that looks green, this up here looks like a a sort of lavender purple colour, you know, the colours are not well, do not look the same on the outside of the packet as they do on the inside, which I will show you now. So this is the inside of the palette and this is the picture on the back. Um, it's not a big deal because most places you go into there will be like a sample one on display that you can see and you can um, have a look at and decide from that if you want to buy it. But if by some chance there happened to be none of those, it would throw you off as to what it really looks like. So this is the inside of the palette. Um, before I get on to this, it is worth pointing out that this palette retails for £24.99, so £25 essentially, and it has 12 eyeshadows and 3 face powders, which can double as eyeshadows if you want them to. Um, on the top here, it says, beautiful definition of person who is reading this. I think that that's a nice wee touch. However, I personally would appreciate a mirror better because this is the type of palette that would be good if you were going traveling. You know, you have your 12 shadows, your three face powders, and um, it would be really good for travel. And if they had a mirror up here, it would be, you know, perfect because it would be quite a decent sized mirror on the top of that palette. Um, but in the same respect, we as consumers don't know the cost for just the palettes. We don't know if putting a mirror into the palette was going to make the palette dearer for us to buy. So there could be a reason behind why there's no mirror. Maybe Louise wanted to put this on it and that's why she didn't use a mirror. We have no idea. But at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. Um, most of the time, if you're going away traveling somewhere, if you're staying in a hotel or something, there is a mirror there somewhere. Um, there's usually a mirror somewhere in the bathroom or in the room, you know, so you can work with it. So now that we've talked a little bit about the actual packaging itself, I am going to go through and swatch all of the shades on my arm and um, have me chat through them, see what I think of them first off, and then I will finally get around to putting them on my face. The first shade in the palette is called Toffee, and it is like so. I swatched that really close to my wrist. And it is like a very sort of warm toned, medium brown color, good for a transition shade. The next one we have is called Tiger. This is like a nice sort of burnt orange, sort of brick red shade. It looks very like true orange um, on my skin. Then the next shade we have is Mars. And anybody who follows LMD will know that she loves Marbella. 
So as you can see here, that's what I mean. This one here is more of like a yellowy orange and this one is like a proper sort of reddy orange, like a true orange. Then we have Coco, which is a nice warm toned, dark brown shade. And I'm really bad at swatching. <laughs> nice warm toned, dark brown shade. And that's what that looks like there. There's absolutely nothing on my arm, by the way. So then at the bottom of this, we have two shimmers. So the first one is called Loyal, and these feel is so buttery. Yes, that is gorgeous. The payoff of those shimmery colors are, is actually amazing. And the last one is called Rusty. Oh my word. Rusty, Loyal is like a, sort of a gold, but not a yellow, yellow gold. It's quite a nice, like, true gold. And Rusty is almost like a rose gold bronzy color. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed with those so far. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch the other six here on my arm. So first of all, we have Beam. Beam is like an icy white shadow with like a pink iridescent shimmer off of it. Beautiful, would be really nice as like an inner corner highlight or all over the lid. Then next to that we have Prinny. Obviously Prinny is named after Louise's doll, Princess. And again, lovely and buttery, not chalky at all. Just goes on very nicely and I think these are really nice to blend out. Then next we have Louise, which we don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out who that's named after. And it's like a real cranberry shade. Um, a nice like bright cranberry shade. And believe it or not, the next shade is called Cranberry. This to me is not as much of a cranberry as Louise would be. It's like a darker, sort of more muted, um, like a burgundy, purpley colour. And it's got a slight shimmer through it. And then across the bottom you have Smoky, which is a really dark, more cool toned brown. And Noir, which is a black. And that's a pretty good black shadow. So that is the palette, all the eyeshadows swatched. I'm just gonna turn my arm this way to swatch the face powders. So this is the shade highlight, which is the one we've all been waiting for. So yeah, that's pretty blinding. Then we have Sculpt, which is a sort of a more, it's quite a neutral um, sculpting color. It's not too cool or warm. And then we have Peachy, which is the blush, which is so pigmented. So again, they're swatched on like the hairs of my arm, so please excuse that. But that is the entire palette swatched. And now I'm gonna clean off my arm and then we'll get straight into um, reviewing the products. Okay, so I've got my eyebrows on and I've concealed out my eyebrows. Please ignore how close up in you are and how bad my eyebrows are, as you can see here. Just pretend you don't see it. It's not happening. If we ignore it, it'll make it go away. So, going straight into the palette, I am going to start off with the colour Marbs. And I'm going to take that on a MAC 224 blending brush. And I'm going to start in my crease. I'm going to blend this right from the inner corner, right out to the outer corner. I'm going up quite high. Next, I'm going to go in with a Morphe M505 brush and I'm going to take the colour I don't really know. Tiger. I'm going to take the colour Tiger. I don't really need it, but I'm going to take it. And I'm going to put that straight into the crease and blend up, but take it slightly lower down than I have taken at Mars. Um, one thing I would say about the shadows is they are very, very pigmented. Beautiful, blend beautifully. Um, absolutely no problem blending them out at all, whatsoever, which is really nice. I'm now going to go in with a Makeup Geek Soft Dome brush and take the colour Louise, which is that lovely bright, bright pink colour, and take that also into the crease. 
obviously wow 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 oh my word i do not prepare myself for how pigmented that's going to be i'm going to take a little fluffy brush just to blend that out some more and i place the color now i'm not worrying too much about the fact that it's getting off my lid because i will go back and worry about that in a minute then I am going to go in and take the shade Beam. Now I'm just taking this on a flat packing brush that looks like this and I'm packing that colour on to the lid. Okay, so this is what you'll have here, something like this. So that colour beam is actually stunning. It really opens up the eye like really nicely. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Zueva Lux Soft Definer and it's the 227 and the colour Cranberry. Basically what I'm going to do is work that right onto the outside of the eye and into the beam. I'm going to put on some liner. Okay, so I'm just going to put on some eyelashes. This is what they look like here. I don't remember the name of them because they are ones I've worn before. So they're in my little like lash case that I keep all my lashes in. Um, so I don't know what they are, but if I can work it out when I'm editing this video, I'll put it in the description. And use my duo lash glue as always. Okay, so that is the lashes on to blend them in with some mascara and stuff but I'm going to go on ahead and do the lower lash line on camera and then I'll go away, do the other eye and show you them when they're both finished. For the lower lash line I'm going to go in with the colour of cranberry, take it right to the outside of the eye and under. So I'm only going to take it in until way right here, I'm not taking it the whole way in. This is on its way to smudge your brush. And then I'm going to take my Makeup Geek Soft Dome Brush again and the colour Marbs. Basically go in with it at the bottom like so. And then I'm going to go in with the colour Beam again and basically highlight the inner corner and pull a little bit of it onto that more lash line as well. Like so. So I'm going to go away and do the other eye and then I will show you what the two eyes look like at the end and then I will do the rest of my face. Okay, so now that I've got my foundation on, I'm going to go in with the Be Perfect pen again and see what I think of it. So I'm going straight underneath the eyes. forehead, on the nose and on the chin. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to take my little concealer brush and I'm going to use that to buff it in. Wow! It's blending in really nicely to my foundation and when I'm taking it up underneath my eyes it is very, doing a very good job of concealing the darkness. Obviously on camera it's harder for you to see the darkness underneath my eyes because I have a ring light on but I can see it on the, in my mirror and I can see the darkness underneath my eyes and it's doing a really good job of concealing that. The reason I imagine it's so good is not only is it nice and full of coverage but it's also I've got a really really nice yellow tone to it and yellow is the colour that um, will combat the blue purpley tones underneath your eyes and therefore get rid of all the darkness. So that is uh, impressive to say the least. I really do like that we pen. Pen it on my chin, it's doing a good job of like concealing spots and stuff without um, looking cakey. 
and it's yes and one thing I'd say is I think it only comes in one colour and this colour for me is the same colour as my foundation. So now for that stuff, I'm going to test out the face powders in the palette. I have not set my face and the reason I have not set my face is because I would not usually set my face with whenever I'm doing my bronzer and stuff. So I'm taking the colour Sculpt and I'm going to use that to sculpt. Yeah, I can only have them if I got my I don't hate that colour, it's a bit pale for me, uh, or it's a bit, um, it's like a contour shade obviously rather than a bronze shade, I'm not much of a contour, uh, unless I'm going out I tend to just really bronze up the face. If you were with quite the dark skin complexion, I don't think this contour shade would really work for you, but I suppose for Louise when she's making this palette, she has to go for the vast majority of people that are going to be getting this palette and that will be people who are very, of very pale complexion and the only reason to that is because we live in Northern Ireland so 99% of people are, there are quite a lot of people who are of very pale complexion just because we don't have sun here, you know, or much sun here. So I'm really blending it out. Did, I'm not going to lie to you, that sculpting sheet did take a little bit of work to blend out to not look muddy nearly, um, but it is workable. I'm pretty sure just from the experience I'm having that if I had set my face first, this, pow this powder would blend into it much better. Um, but again, I wanted to give it a fair try. I don't set my face first ever. I don't have to. A lot of my other powders like all my other powders that I would use on my face work perfectly on my face whenever it's not set. So I suppose it's just a matter of the powder, it's a matter of preference and maybe whenever it was being tested you know like maybe it was made with being able to be being buildable on top of a powder in mind, who knows. So there I've bronzed my, I've shaded in my face quite, uh, quite violently really haven't I? I'm just going with my banana powder to cut underneath. The reason I like doing this is because this powder is not too, um, not too stark white, but it still cuts quite nicely. But it leaves a nice sort of like subtle line rather than like a harsh line, which is what I'm going for. I'm just setting the forehead and blending the sculpt shade and my concealer and stuff all into one so it doesn't look weird and like a line. Okay, so the sculpt shade I'm impressed with, it is nice and it applies quite nicely. I think if you set your face first it would definitely apply much better. But I'm going to go in now with Peachy, which does not go with my eyes at all, but sure. A Peachy blush is uh, not the type of blush I would usually go for. Wow, that's pigmented so I'm going to knock off the vast majority of it because I don't like a lot of blush. I put my blush quite far back, I don't put it on the apples of my cheek and the reason I don't is because it makes your, it brings your face, makes my face look sort of like chubbier and I already have a potato head so do not need that type of negativity in my life. Doing the same on the other side, tap off all the excess. Now this blush does have a slight shimmer to it which actually I thought I would hate because I'm not, again, not a shimmery blush kind of gal, but it's not shimmery on your face, it's just like a healthy sort of glow on your face. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, or I've been waiting for, is the highlight. Now it looks pigmented on the brush. Anyone who has Louise on Snapchat, you've seen her using this highlight and she just looks so glowy. Um, it does look to be quite a chunky highlight on the brush and stuff, but we'll see. So here we go. 
Wow. But I like myself a good glue rather than I like to look like I'm blinding people rather than a sort of glue from within. So let's do that again on this side. Like that is nice. That's a really nice glue. I like that. And I'm putting quite a lot on my brush, you know, I'm really buffing it in. But you could definitely go for more of a subtle glue if that's what you're into, which I don't understand why you would be in magic. I'm also gonna go with the tip of my nose up in here. I like to I like this area, I don't know why, I just do. And the You can only set thumbs up or down for a song player on a custom radio station. Okay. And also just the cupid's bow. So yeah, I'm gonna just blind a wee bit more, take it up a wee tiny bit around the top of my eyebrow. Like so. Okay, so that is the highlighter done. I am gonna do my lips now and then just to sort of summarize on what I think about this palette, the color scheme is absolutely beautiful. I really, really like it. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that this was my sister's palette and that there was a reason why I didn't have this palette myself. The reason for that is that bar the color Louise, um, which is quite a nice like cranberry, almost like virgin or raspberry kind of color, I have probably all of those colors in other palettes. Um, so for me personally, buying this palette is not really useful. I have those colours, I probably will get the palette eventually but I'm not in as big a rush as some other people are so I don't see the point in buying it to use it for a video to then not probably use it as much again. I love the palette, it's beautiful and the pigment or the pigmentation and the blendability of the shadows is insane. Um, so Good on Louise, it is a really good palette. For the first time she's ever made a palette, it is a very, very good palette. Have to give it to her. Um, I like the concept of it being an all-in-one. Usually I don't like these, like three, I don't like palettes that have these three shades in it, but surprisingly, I actually like all of the powders. The shadows are lovely and blendable. All in all, would I recommend for you to buy this palette? Yes, if it is a color scheme that you think you would use, buy it at the end of the day the way I look at it is these colours here are sort of, sort of more of your everyday wearable shades. These these four in particular are sort of you know a bit more out there um, and could be worn on like a night out. You've got these two shades to help darken everything down and um, the highlighter is nice and buildable. And all in all it is a really good palette. It's a good price for the fact that you get 12 shadows and three face powders, £25 is not a lot of money. And I genuinely do believe that um, it is a very, very good palette. So yes, if you um, if you're looking for like a, one of those all-in-one palettes, this would be a good palette to buy. As well as that, it's good to support local people. Um, at the end of the day, Louise is from Northern Ireland, just like the rest of us, and it's good to be able to support her in her business ventures. So. The other thing obviously is this Be Perfect concealer pen. I do really like it surprisingly, I was kind of surprised I thought I wouldn't like it. Again, it isn't as light as the concealer I would usually use, but again, it's still pretty. I think if I was tanned, I'd be more inclined to use this than I would be when I'm my usual pale, pasty self. So yes, that is my final thoughts on the Be Perfect with Louise McDonald Master Palette. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and leave me a wee comment below to tell me what you'd like to see from me next. If you haven't already, then please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the little bell notification and you'll never miss when I upload. And I will see everyone in my next video.